Earth's tilt may exacerbate a melting Antarctic. This is by Stephanie Pappas on Live Science. Now, the thing is that we've already made a video on this. Scientists have said that as the glaciers, Antarctica glaciers melt, the shape of the Earth will change in that the glaciers will not be pushing the bottom part of the Earth inward, bulging the Earth, making the bulge Earth around the equators. And that means that the tectonic plates will move, and that means that we'll have, obviously, a lot of huge Earth changes, and probably, probably quite fast, as the uh, melting is rapid. So, uh, Earth's tilt makes things worse concerning the Antarctic melt. This is on Live Science. Antarctic ice sheets responded most strongly to the angle of Earth's tilt on its axis when the ice extends into the ocean. As levels of the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide rise and warm the globe, Antarctica's ice will become more vulnerable to cycles on the astronomical scale, particularly the tilt of our planet as it spins around its axis. Well, okay, for those who say that uh, there may not be that much global warming, let's not forget they the, that Antarctica has over a hundred volcanoes and many of them are active. So they are covered by the ice sheets and they would obviously be melting the ice sheets from underneath. So that's enough to make the ice melt. Now, uh, new research finds that over 30 million years of history, Antarctica's ice sheets responded most strongly to the angle of Earth's tilt on its axis when the ice extends into the oceans interacting with currents that can bring warm water lapping at their margins and leading into the increased melt. The effect of the tilt peaked when carbon dioxide levels were similar to what scientists predict for the next century if humans don't get emissions under control or unless the uh, volcanoes stop, which they probably won't because the tilt will make them, the, the, the tonic plates be, uh, start moving. Now, so, you know, it basically looks like there is no way to stop the uh, melting of the glaciers. Now, as carbon dioxide levels push past 400 parts per million, the climate will become more sensitive to the Earth's tilt or obliquity. Research reported January 14th in the journal Nature Geoscience. And uh, the study co-author, Stephanie Myers, said, Really critical is the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. She's a paleoclimatologist at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. A scenario of high carbon dioxide and high tilt angle could be particularly devastating to the uh, miles thick ice covering Antarctica. But they also reconstructed the past. Over about 40,000 years, the Earth's axis tilts back and forth forth like a rocking chair, Meyer said. Currently, this obliquity is about 23.4 degrees, but it can be as little as 22.1 degrees or as much as 24.5 degrees. The tilt matters for when and where sunlight hits the globe and can thus influence the climate. So as we can see from the diagram here, the position of the Earth in space in relation to the sun uh, and the way it, the Earth tilts has a huge difference in what part of the, sun, the Earth gets the uh, most sunlight. Now, the tilt matters for when and where the sunlight hits the globe and can influence the climate. To reconstruct a history of how America's ice has responded to this tilt, Myers and his co-authors used a few sources of information on the Earth's climate past one source was calcium carbonate from the ocean's bottom, left behind by single-celled organisms called benthic foraminifera. These organisms excrete a calcium carbonate shell around themselves, locking in a global, continuous record of the chemistry of the oceans and the atmosphere. Sediment records from right around Antarctica provided another source of climate history, a speciality study co-author paleoclimatologist Richard Levy of GNS Science at Victoria University, Wellington, New Zealand. These sediments drilled from the ocean bottom in long columnar cones. The cores also hold a 
record of the past. A glacier, for example, dumps a distinctive mixture of mud and sand and gravel where it sits, and these cores provide a very detailed picture of where the ice sheets once were, Meyer said, but there are gaps in the record. Ice cycles. With data from both sources, the researchers pieced together a history of Antarctica from 34 million to 5 million years ago. The first large ice sheets on Antarctica formed 34 million years ago, Levy said, and year-round sea ice became the norm only 3 million years ago when carbon dioxide levels fell below 400 parts per million. From about 34 million years ago to about 25 million years ago, carbon dioxide was very high, a 6 to 800 parts per million, and most of Antarctica's ice was land-based, not in connection with the sea. The continent's ice advanced and retreated were relatively intensive to the planet's tilt at that time, the researcher said, between about 24.5 million and 14 million years ago, atmospheric carbon dioxide dropped between 460 uh, 600 part per million. The ice sheets advanced more often into the sea, but there was not very much floating sea ice. At this time, the planet became quite sensitive to the tilt of Earth's axis. Between 13 million and 5, uh, 5 million years ago, Carbon dioxide levels dropped again, going to as low as 200 parts per million. Floating sea ice became more prominent, forming a crust over open ocean in the water in the winter and thinly only in the summer. Sensitivity to the Earth's tilt declined. It's not entirely clear why this change in sensitivity to obliquity occurs. Levy told Live Science that the reasons seem to involve the contact between the ice and the ocean. At times of high tilt, the polar regions warm and the temperature differs. There's differences between the equator and the poles and they become less extreme. This in turn alters wind and current patterns which are largely driven by this temperature difference, ultimately increasing the flow of warm water, ocean water to, Atlanta, to the Antarctic's edge. When ice is mostly land-based, this flow does not touch the ice but when the ice sheets are grounded against ocean bottoms, in contact with the currents, the flow of warm water matters a lot. Floating sea ice appears to block some of the flow, decreasing ice sheets tendency to melt, but when carbon dioxide levels are high enough, that floating ice melts, and there's nothing stopping those warm currents. That's when Earth's tilt seems to matter the most, as occurred between 24.5 million and 14 million years ago. This history spells trouble for Antarctica's future. In 2016, the level of carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere reached past 400 parts per million permanently, and last time the Earth's geologic history that carbon dioxide was this high, there was no year-round ice in Antarctica. If emissions continue as they are, the sea ice will falter, like we said, and we will jump back to a world that has not existed for millions of years. He said Antarctica's vulnerable marine-based ice sheets will feel the effect of our current relatively high tilt and ocean warming in Antarctica's margins will become amplified. On Monday, January 14th, another group of researchers reported that the rate of Antarctica melt is already six times faster than it was just a few decades ago, and the researchers found that the continent lost about 40 gigatons of ice per year between 1979 and 1990. And between 2009 and 2017, it lost 252 gigatons of ice per year on average. The researchers are now looking into the small variations in sensitivity to Earth's tilt that occurs across the three broad patterns that they found, but the main message is really clear, Levy said. Antarctic sea ice is clearly important, we need to, I think, <clears throat> I think I'm catching what Ben had. Ben is in Seattle and I'm in Athens. <laughs> Sorry, forgive me. Antarctic sea ice is clearly important. We need to push on and figure out ways to meet emission targets. I'll leave a link below for you for this on Life Science. If you'd like to join me on my
Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.